umekaa na mtu mwenye unampenda namwambia welcome to plus one experience <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen let's be upstanding and let's receive uh, the ministry of uh, the senior associate pastor of deliverance church international moja one more time let's put our hands together and show some plus one love for the one and only reverend oscar amisi karibu sana pasi let's appreciate reverend oscar amisi as he comes to bring us karibu sana good afternoon you guys are doing well but good to see you you guys may be seated you may be seated can I ask my wife to come and say hi? I came together with her. Please come and say hi to these wonderful guys from from Kangundo Road. Plus one. Sita mimi nimekaa na plus one. Praise God. Praise God. You're well this afternoon? Yeah, we thank God for this opportunity. We pray that even as we sit and learn about being emotionally intelligent, we'll be able to pick one or two things that will help us as we go on in this life god bless you yeah, thank you wow but good to see you um i've listened i came in when munene was talking and I'm, i was just wondering now what has do i say about emotional intelligence this man has murdered and broken that thing uh, in good pieces for you um uh, that's what i thought when i was seated there you've really broken it so well and uh, like you mentioned there's still more to go so me I'll make sure I don't touch on the part that you need to do and uh, Mrs Monene needs to do because this couple uh doing a tremendous job i know this is not their first time here right so they've been blessing you see so they've been blessing you so me I'll make sure that i just take like a bit and i need them to come and continue on uh, from that part um and then what your wife will bring in I may not go into the technicalities of emotional intelligence. I may try and look for what do you need? What are some of the skills that you need to be emotionally intelligent? I think I'll just give you three things and then I'll I'll, I'll get of, out of your face. Just three things that can help you uh to to be a person who has emotional intelligence. Did you know in this world there's something called IQ? Do you know this IQ? Then there's EQ. Are you aware? Me have added a third one that I think people need um uh, when called AQ. And I think many people need AQ, but we may not talk about AQ, but IQ is what you and I get in school. Uh we go to school, you get uh what you call intelligence quotients. Your intelligence quotient uh either goes up or goes down. But many people don't even think about the EQ, the emotional quotient that he was talking about. That one really not taught in school the other one that is not taught in school is what i call aq it's called the adaptability quotient not taught in school that everybody needs but that's for uh for for another time but i want to just flip it and spin it a little bit and and, and approach that subject from a very different angle that i'm used to uh so that i don't delve into what uh, mr and Mus- mrs munana will be talking about they can take it a uh, build from where they started and add what i'm going to bring and land this thing properly for us i need to ask you a question as you seated there who's the most difficult person you've ever encountered in life i need you to think about it the most difficult person you've ever encountered in life think about it either when you're in primary or in high school or in campus or even now in church maybe that person is sitting next to you so in fact if you are just right on a corner of that notebook and make sure nobody sees you know the way we used to do exams in school i don't know if you do them now we used to cover like this so that nobody sees so make sure nobody sees because you may be writing about the guy who seated next to you the most difficult person you've ever encountered who's that person the most difficult yandike tu mali andika tu jina what name comes into mind when you think about the most difficult person you've ever encountered in life the most difficult what names are they in school some are they in your home or oh, is it your parents are we are talking about plus one is it that uh, girl that you're taking out or that jama that that is taking you out who's that most difficult or if you're working is it that colleague is it your neighbor 
Or is it us pastors? <laughs> we could be the most difficult people you've ever encountered. Who's the most difficult person you've ever encountered? Have you thought about somebody? Have you thought about somebody? Come on, talk to me, guys. Have you thought about somebody? Has a name come into mind? Have you written that name down? Oh, you hold it. Hold it. You, you just hold that name. Let me say what I need to say. Then we'll get back to that name that has come. Um, some of you may have heard me give this story. Some of you haven't, but I'll give it again. If you've heard it, it's for your benefit. You get to hear it the second time. If you've never heard it, then uh, at least you get to hear it for the first time. I'm a lover of history um, and things that have happened in the past because I believe history shapes the future. So, in 1912, uh, 15th of April, there's a ship that did a maiden voyage. Very historic maiden voyage. But before then, uh, before it embarked on that maiden voyage, of course, they needed to sell seats in the ship. So the manufacturers of the ship were busy building the ship. Uh, they were uh, convinced it's going to be the biggest, the best ship. So, and that's how they were selling it. They would tell people, you know, we are building the strongest ship in the universe. No ship can beat this ship. Uh, what they were saying is that this is going to be the strongest ship that nothing can sink it. In fact, they said it's so strong, so strong that not, not even God, even God cannot sink this ship. And that's how they sold it. And when guys heard that, they bought tickets and bought tickets. You can imagine families buying tickets, guys on a date, buying tickets together to be on this maiden voyage. And they were starting off in Southampton all the way to New York across the Atlantic. So people bought seats and bought seats, reserved their seats. It is said even before they finished, a couple of months before they finished, that construction, it was totally sold out. Fast forward to 15th of April, 1912, and everybody's excited. They're carrying their bags. They're on this maiden voyage for the first time in the strongest ship in the world, the ship that God cannot sink, and they're all with their bags get on board this ship. Now, these guys were so sure of their ship because those who manufacture ships will tell you that when you are doing this big ship uh, that are carrying thousands, what you need to do is to make sure that in the ship they attach smaller boats. And not few, but many smaller boats attached to the big ship. So that if, in case anything happens midstream in the sea, our people will use the smaller ones to save themselves. And not only do they do those two smaller boats, but they will do floaters in their hundreds and in their thousands. So that everybody has at least either one floater or two, if it's possible. So that just in case you don't have time to jump into a ship, you can take a car floater, wrap it around yourself as you jump into that smaller ship, and you'll be able to save your life if anything happens midstream. But these guys were so sure about this ship, so they didn't bother. In fact, they said they did about, maybe less, maybe about 200 smaller boats and a few floaters. 15th of April, they all are uh, on this wonderful, strong, powerful ship that God can't even sink, and they start their journey. Midstream their journey, um, somebody calls the captain of the ship and tells the captain, you know what? The distance, the direction you're going is a dangerous direction. You need to pay attention because you're driving or you're steering the ship directly in the path of icebergs. But this guy didn't even pay attention because who cares? You are in the strongest ship. You are in the ship that God can't even do what? Sink. So who cares about icebergs? As a matter of fact, when you see an iceberg uh, on, uh, on the surface of the water, what you see is just a tip that is just about 10%. So who cares? This, this is the biggest ship, the strongest one. So he continues to go. It is said he got a second call that he didn't pay attention to. He got a third call that he didn't pay attention to. He got a fourth call that he didn't pay attention to. A fifth one that he didn't pay attention to. Eventually, he gets a sixth call. He picks the receiver and speaks to the guy on the other side and says, mind your own business. We are having fun. And he bangs the receiver. Four hours into the journey from the call, it is said the ship hit a major iceberg 
this ship that was so strong that God could not sink was ripped into two and it started to drown. And I need you to know this, that because it was midstream, it was so much in the interior, it took one hour for the ship that would have been able to save them to get to where they were at. So by the time that ship gets to where they were at, only 750 people could be saved. 1,500 people died on that fateful night of 15th April 1912. And that's the ship that many may know, and those who don't know, let me tell you, it's called the Titanic that sank. What sank the Titanic? It was the strongest ship. What sank it? You see, I told you earlier, when you see a tip of an iceberg, it's just 10% that is on the surface of the water. But it is said under the surface of the water is a mass 90% that nobody can see. So this man looks at the 10% that he could see and he underestimates the power of the iceberg, but then he overestimates the strength of the ship. You see, the 10% is what everybody can see, and sometimes we look down or we row what we can see. But then there's a 90% under the surface of the water that the person seated next to you can't see it, doesn't know it. Interestingly, that 90% that is under the water is what defines you and defines me. Many times we spend a lot of time taking care of the 10% that everybody can see. But we pay very little attention to the 90% that no one can see, that is only you who knows, God knows, and I think maybe the devil to some extent. That 90% is really that which makes who you are. That if you can master the 90%, then you can control yourself. You can be able to manage yourself. Let me put it this way. You can be able to lead yourself. Because that story from the, from the Titanic, simple lesson that it gives to us, is that if you cannot lead yourself, you cannot lead others. If the 90% is who you are, if you can't master the 90%, then it means you can't lead yourself. You can't conquer yourself. You can't manage yourself. You can't govern yourself. And if you can't do that, then you can't lead anybody else out there. And to me, that sums up that story of emotional intelligence. Any person who's emotionally intelligent is somebody who's able to control themselves, lead themselves, master themselves. You can't claim to have emotional intelligence and you can't take care of your own appetites, your own actions, your thought life. You can only say, I'm emotionally intelligent if you can master yourself. You can lead yourself. And that's what we learn from that story of the Titanic. I told you many of us spend a lot of time and concentrate too much on the externals. And we don't concentrate on the who we are or on the internals. internals. You see, God grows us from inside out, not from outside in. God grows us from where? From inside out so that we can be able to conquer what is out there. You can't want to conquer what is out there before you conquer what is inside. Jesus said and told the disciples, what destroys a man is not what comes from outside, but it is what does what comes from within. And that's why that conversation is very important as you guys go ahead with Mr. and Mrs. Monene. That we have people who are so learned, but they can't manage themselves. They can't control themselves. We have people who are so gifted, 
but they can't control themselves. Because the 10% that people see are your giftings, and that's what you concentrate on, your charisma, your talent, how good you can sing, how well you can speak, how eloquent you are, how smartly dressed you can be. You can have all those, but if you've never learned to manage, to lead, to control yourself, then you'll be a disaster or an eruption for anyone to come close. You see, us, we judge people with the externals. So Oscar, ah, is how good he can speak. Also and so is how good they can sing. How are they dressed? How funny are they? How exciting are they to be around? But you don't da judge people who make our, our, our conclusions on people from that which is within. And, and it's natural with us. Even Samuel, who was a prophet of God, that's what he did. When he was sent to go and anoint a prophet, a king, he looked at the strong, the handsome, the good looking, and he said, it's that one, it's that one. Until God comes and says, ah, ah, pana, usiangalie tu inje. Mimi nangalie angawapi? Ndani. That's where emotional intelligence starts. When we start to manage ourselves, the who we are, when nobody else is seeing us. That's where it starts. And that's what I'll challenge you today. Would you not underestimate the power of the 90% and overestimate yourself? If you overestimate yourself, the 90% will bring you down and will be saying, you see that guy? Their challenge is that their levels of emotional intelligence are very low. So you erupt here and you're wondering, what's happening? It's because, and I'll give you those three things that would help you deal with that. There are things you've not dealt with to help you be emotionally secure, be emotionally intelligent. I won't keep you for long. I told you me I want, uh, I want this couple to, to pick this up because I believe in what they're doing. Three things that will help you to build your emotional intelligence or your emotional quotient very quickly. Remember we talked about yourself. Nobody can be emotionally intelligent on your behalf. You've got to do it. So three things. The first one is self-awareness, what I call self-awareness. The first one is self-awareness. The second one was, is what I call self-alignment. And the third one is what I call self-discipline. Self-awareness. And then what? Come on, say it with me. The second one is what? And the third one? Okay, let's start from number one. Number one is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say it one more time loudly. Okay, the very last time. Shout it. It's all about self. It's about what? It is, not, it is not about things that are, it's, it's all about self. It's all self-awareness. And self-awareness is where you've gotten to a point whereby you have been able to know or to discover your strengths and your weaknesses as an individual. You're able to make out the gaps that you have and you're in the process of working to maximize your strengths and to bridge your gaps. You've developed a proper self-image based on your identity that is made up of your strengths and your weaknesses. In other words, you're not ignorant of yourself. You have a habit of doing periodic self-evaluation to know where you are strong and where you are weak. That's what will help you. That's how you become self-aware. You're not ignorant of yourself. You can't lead yourself if you're ignorant of self. And people who are emotionally intelligent are aware of who they are. They know their strengths and they know their weaknesses. Now, 
I know you guys are spiritual. I know you may say, let me go to heaven's gate or Catalonia and pray. God revealed to me what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses. Let me tell you, they're very simple. In fact, scientific ways, simple scientific ways that would help you know the kind of person you are and the strengths that you have and the weaknesses you have. The most basic scientific way you can find is one, the person seated next to you. If they are your close friends uh, and they know you and you've given them permission to speak into your life, they can tell you, by the way, you're strong in this. We don't want you insisting you want to sing and the only place you're able to sing is in the shower and not in the choir. So there has to be somebody who can come and tell you, by the way, always the, always the. But when we hear you sing, all you're doing is to croak. Not everybody can tell you that. <laughs> there has to be somebody who can, should be able to tell you. Or you want to MC a meeting. I, I think you could MC. I, I think you could poor, you could make a laptop, una to mix kia vitu. Like in your microphone, see where we. You need somebody who's a close friend who has that permission to do that. That's the basic. But there are others that are very easy, scientific ones. If I had a flip chart here, I would show you one that is very easy. Have you ever heard of something called a SWOT analysis? Come on, have you ever heard of a SWOT analysis? So you draw a cross. Draw a cross on, your, on that notebook. Just draw a cross. A cross like this. Msalaba. Chora tu msalaba kwa your notebook. Msalaba. Of course, you are kwanza ya juu in a point ni O, opportunities. Indio? You see, unayandika opportunities. Alafu ile inafuata, ile inafuata, see on the, sasa imisimama, so this is the cross. These opportunities. This one here is strength. Okay? So we're still at opportunities here. This one here is weaknesses. And then opportunity, threats. Umone, you believe you in a template, ka simple. So when you want to start finding out what kind of strengths I have or I don't have, you start asking yourself. You forget about doing it for your organization or for the church. You start looking at yourself. You ask yourself, what strengths do I have? And these strengths will be those things that if you do, you feel like fish in water. You feel like you're in your element. You don't struggle. You know, you don't do what? You don't struggle. You know, everybody here has something that God gave them. If they do, they don't struggle. All of us. So you write down. And then there's opportunities. And with opportunities, I mean, there are strengths and there are opportunities. Between strengths and opportunities, you ask yourself, what opportunities do I have? If I took advantage of, I'll be better. Okay? Then weaknesses. Weaknesses will be those things that you know, I have the potential to do well in this thing. But I always find myself doing what? Sliding back. Those are your weaknesses. Are those ones are in nice inner joy. If I put in a lot of practice, I'll be able to master it. And then threats will be things that are external that would hinder you from becoming the best version of yourself. So sometimes there are things that are beyond your control. So you sit down and write some of those things and you call a friend and tell them, let's sit together and check this. Help me be more self-aware by looking at some of the strengths that I have. What are you doing? You're getting to know yourself. You know what happens? Once you know your weaknesses and you know your strengths, what you tell yourself is, I know here I am good, so I'll put my best foot forward. Here I have weaknesses, so I'll make sure that if I was at 10, I'll push it to about 40, 50%. The other thing it does for you is that you get to understand where I have weaknesses, there's somebody else who has got what? strengths. And when I have strengths, there's somebody else who has got what? Weaknesses. So you're in a team like this. You will not fight. If I realize there are things that Munena is good, better than me, I will not be insecure. 
I will learn that, listen, I will excel in my strengths, but I will push Monene in his strengths. And he does the same. In his weaknesses, he will push me forward as I push him in his strengths. So we are not competing. We are not fighting. In a relationship, it happens. Ah, yeah. Not just relationships. You know, married couples sometimes compete. So you get to understand, listen, my wife is strong in this. I will push her and cheer her on as she does it. And when she finds out that I'm strong in some areas, it's her turn to come behind me and do what? And cheer me and push me forward. You're becoming self-aware. You are not insecure. Many of us are too insecure. And it doesn't start in marriages. It starts in relationships. You know? You may be the man, but the girl may be the brains of the house. My goodness. Maybe the brains. Ashida kama ule ishi Afrika unasema ngapana jamaa ndio lazima ndio kuebre eh na mmepata mtu hii homo akuna joe ulikuwa au shikanishi but you are afraid kuambia wife yako na joe ndio li pass exams fundisha mtu fundisha mtu hii au pambani nayo kama ilikuwa mbaya ilikuwa mbaya mimi told my daughter mimi si could well in maths so i'm not fighting with you with maths so what i'll do Let me get you a tutor. Maybe you can break the family record and do well in mathematics. Sindio? Because you get to know who you are. You get to know your strengths. You get to know your weaknesses. And it happens in relationships, in marriage, and I'm praying that your relationships end up in marriage, that you start to learn how to support each other. You are not insecure. It starts from self-awareness. You are confident and comfortable in your skin. I'm aware of myself. Number two, self-alignment. Self-alignment. Number two is self-alignment. You see, once you've been self-aware, you have a proper self-image based on your strengths and your weaknesses, there's something else that should help support that, and it's called self-alignment. Self-alignment is simply principles that you've come up with that help you to make a moral decision in life. That help you to make a moral decision. In other words, what I'm talking about is values. You have values that help you to make a moral decision in life. You have values that help you to say no when you're supposed to say no and say yes when you're supposed to say no. Say yes. You mean your Coca-Cola is values? Eh? I mean, if you went to Google Coke, eh? So they have values. I'm any company. KCC, Milk, Apple. So what values? Do you know what those values do? Those values are what define their culture. In other words, if you went to Coca-Cola and told them, we want you to start selling beer, because if you sold beer, you'll make a lot of money. Coke will tell you, no. We are a soft drink company. The same as KCC. Ama ukuje DCU mo utuambi, by the way, 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 there's a place, if you go and mine, you'll get gold. And if we get this gold, we can sell it, and we can plant 50 churches. Do you know what we'll tell you? Good idea, but we are not in the mining business. We are in the, in people, in the kingdom business, soul-saving business. That's what we will tell you. So we'll tell you that's a good idea, but you do it. Because it defines who we are. If you have values, somebody will come and tell you, my sister, what's your name? Davina. Davina. Somebody comes and says, Davina, you know what? Um, I'm thinking we should embark on this venture that is going this side. And you in your values, you're not going this side, you're going north. This one is going south. So they come and tell you, hey, we need to go south side. I know your values is going to north, but they are, they are good deals this side. You know what, Davina, you will do? You will not even need to go and pray about it. You will tell them, by the way, me, what defines me is going northwards. I cannot go southwards. That's what defines me. You don't even need to pray about it. 
you can make a decision. When you have values, somebody comes and erupts in your presence and they call you all names. All those names. Because you have a value that is called self-control. Your decision making on how to respond to that person will be based on this value called what? Self-control. So instead of reacting and kicking them out, they will see you turn, go, and they think you're a coward. It's not that you're a coward. It is because you have a value system that tells you, I am not fighting back. I can control my emotions. Are we together? How many of us don't have values? The organizations you work for, the schools you are in that have values, but you don't have values. If I asked you, what are your top three values, will you give me? Do you know them? Well, that's what will help in, in emotional intelligence. Because tomorrow you'll be confronted by issues. You need values. So one of my values is integrity. I have, it's, an, it's a value. Another value that I have is excellence. Another one that I have is networking and partnership. I have about five. So anytime somebody approaches me with an offer, most of the time I'll go back and ask myself, the offer I've been given, does that offer align to my values? If that offer doesn't align to my values, doesn't matter how good it is, my answer is what? No. I don't even say, ah, let me go pray about it. <laughs> values. Do you know your values? If a kasliki wheelie came here, you know what a sliki wheelie is? I'm a new school, I'm not a sliki wheelie. Me during our days, we had sliki wheelies. I'll tell you what sliki wheelies were. Well, those guys would come in the youth group, eh? And you seated here with Davina, what's her name? Yvonne. Yvonne and Marcy. I'm seated with Yvonne, Davina, and Marcy. We are talking. And we are very good friends. And a sliki wheelie comes from that side. It's after the, the TMG meeting. And all of a sudden, I just see Davina go. Yvonne go, there's like a pool that is pulling and Marcy go and if I turn, uh, they're all around the slicky willy. This guy who has a charm, you know this charm that pulls, eh? You know, you know those guys, are those guys still there in church? Do you guys have them? I'm a Alicia. Hey, Miss Kuzetu Alikua. Eh? That if you're going for a hike or a camp, you pray that God provides you finances to go and the second thing you bind is that that slicky really doesn't get money to go for the same camp. Because you know, if he goes for that camp, all the girls, this is where I want to, you know, you know, you know, build my case. And then you see this guy. Ah, goodness. Eh? I'm a maliuko. Sabu unajua kitoka, ama ya tu ukiwa na haja kuenda luu, ata uwendi. Sabu unajua uneza enda, by the time unarudi, ame muongelesha tu for five minutes, ame muingiza box, attack story. Are those people still there? Eh? Nye amna? I think sisi, I think sisi ya tukwa tumoko kapoa, eh? Hai! So if you have good values, Davina, or Yvonne, or Masi, and the slicky willy comes, you don't look at how they look like. They may be better looking than I do. You don't look at how they look like. You look at the values. You look at the values. So your decision to engage in the box or not is not based on how good looking they are, which is important. I'm not saying good when you have to have an accident. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. Please don't get me wrong. He must be good looking. But I'm saying over beyond the good looking and sense of humor, we are looking at values. So we give box sababu jamaa vila nakaa peke yake. That's what values do for you. Can I give you a last one, self-discipline? Maybe let me not finish. We'll come and finish this next time. Uh, self-discipline. So self-awareness and then self and then self-discipline. Self-discipline is very difficult. In fact, if there's a word hated by many of us, 
self-discipline, patience. Those words are not, are not liked. Self-control are not liked. But you can't thrive in life without it. You can't claim to be emotionally intelligent if you're not, you don't have self-discipline. Because self-discipline is what holds you not to fall into that trap. And it is self-discipline that supports your value system. Because if you have values and you don't have self-discipline, there'll just be words written on paper. Have you ever gone to an organization that says our value is uh, generosity, kindness, but when you work in that organization, you don't see any generosity, you don't see any kindness. You know why? Because they don't have the discipline to live out their values. So what you and I need is what? Self-discipline. And self-discipline is really going back to my first point that helps you to conquer yourself and to lead yourself. Me, I'm done. But let me give you this story and then I'm, I get out of your way. Many years back, there was a car, a car domain in Germany called Prussia. When Germany was, was beyond East and West, it had taken part of Austria, there was a car domain called Prussia. And Prussia had somebody like a king or a vassal. But there would be an equivalent of a king who would rule that domain. So one day, this king is going through Prussia, he's on his horses, together with his orderlies, they are you know, basking and checking uh, his domain. And he looked on the other side and he sees an old man walking with a walking stick. And he sees this old man and he gets excited and he says, hey, I need to go say hi to one of my subjects. So he dismounts from his horse and he's taken to where this old man is. And he salutes him and says, hey, how are you? And he asks the man, what's your name? Because he's a king, he knows, everybody knows me. So he asks this man, what's your name? And the man doesn't even look at him. He says, my name is King. And the king is, you said your name is what? He says, my name is King. And the king is troubled. If you are king, who am I? <laughs> so the king asks him a third question. If you are king, where do you rule? Where is your domain? And that's the time the old man lifted up his head and looked at the king and he said, I rule over myself. You can never be emotionally intelligent if you don't learn to rule over yourself. You see, it is only fools who go out to change the world before they change themselves. One more time, let's appreciate Reverend Oscar Amisi. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Rev. Oscar, together with Mom Jennifer Santeni Sana for coming. Uh, this is the plus one experience. So, let's appreciate Mom Jennifer Amisi. All right. Have you learned something? Have you picked something? The number one is self. Self-awareness. The second one is self. Self-alignment. The third one is... Amen. May you purpose to conquer yourself before you conquer the world. Amen. Amen. Amen.